painting children presents certain challenges. If you're used to painting adults, the proportions are very, very different. You can see this lovely girl in her beautiful red berry is, is well, she's got, well, her face is wider than it is deep. I was going to say it's a square face, but it's not. It's actually wider. So proportions are different. So you really have to take those into account because if you lengthen the face, it will make the child look a lot older. The other thing is, of course, they've just got beautiful smooth skin and you need to be really careful about getting hard paint lines on their skin that would look like wrinkles. So the challenge is to get tone and shaping without implying wrinkles. Other thing to look at is like the, the, the relative size of their eyes in their face. They are bigger and often the whites of their eyes are almost bluey white so there are things to to look at with with a child that are very different from an adult however using that purple underpainting process still works with a child and that's what i want to show you today in the previous couple of videos you saw me use this purple underpainting first of all on um, a black skin then a Middle Eastern skin, then a white sort of Caucasian skin. And now I want to use it on this lovely, very cheeky looking little girl. As before, we start with our purple underpainting and we're doing a tonal painting here, but we're going to keep everything very light and very smooth. I'm not going to have, I hope, any hard edges in the skin so i'm going to have to be careful because this purple dioxazine which is what i'm using is a very staining color and if i put something on a bit too heavy the water when i go to dilute it won't necessarily take it off because it sinks into the the paper very very quickly I'm using a piece about roughly A4 size of not surface, which is cold press surface. It's 140 pounds. This is Bockingford, which is what I often use. And I've just got it taped down mostly so that I get a nice clear edge around it and that it doesn't move while I'm painting and go off the, the edge of my camera. So I'm going to proceed quite cautiously because, say, I just don't want to go too over the top and regret it. There's gonna... still lights and darks in there. There's quite a shadow under the beret on the hair, but then across the forehead there is there are a few highlights. And as always, we don't want to give her helmet hair. So let's think about the hair being absolutely part of the face. Just keeping it as gentle as I can. And I find this a challenge because I tend to be a bit gung-ho with my, my colours and my tones. But there aren't any hard edges in the berry. So again, oops, need to just soften those off and get nice gradual transition using a clean brush and just gently pulling that away to clean water. If you're not sure then by all means use your phone or some sort of photographic editing software or whatever to turn your picture black and white and things will be a lot clearer area is definitely darker under her beautiful dimpled chin we're just trying to potentially paint hair and neck and face as one there's the tiniest triangle of her arm showing here i just traced this i often draw freehand and i love to do that Sometimes, if time is against me, then I'm certainly not averse 
to just tracing or projecting or using some other transfer method to get my image onto the paper because what I'm trying to do is experiment and enjoy the painting process and this is painting and drawing gaining a likeness are actually two quite separate skill sets both equally important but if you're trying to really play with paint you know just don't sweat the the gaining getting a likeness if that's giving you some issues is Paintings have a mind of their own and you may have actually, you can have a class of 10 people who will have all traced their image and you will get 10 different portraits. If at some point you can spend some time really studying how to get a likeness, that would be brilliant too. If you're finding the paint sinks into the paper a bit too quickly and you are getting hard edges, do consider wetting the paper first and then applying the paint because that will give you a little bit of control, a bit more control. Once you're happy with your purple underpainting, and I'm not going to go much further than this, then you need to let it dry thoroughly. That sort of sets the paint so that we can then layer on top to our heart's content without fear of it muddying up. If you could see this whole reference, you would see that she is wearing some beautiful yellow trousers. So I thought I'm going to do this background in yellow and then we'll have the red hat. And maybe I will do blue lines on her shirt. And then we've got a real primary red, yellow, blue sort of vibe going on which I think is rather appropriate for, for a child. So I'm going to put the background in now because then if I do wisps of hair that can come over the top and I'm going to take some of the yellow into to the hair and I'm actually going to take it over the red of the beret that won't matter because that will then underpin and sort of tie this together. This is, I'm going to say, Windsor Yellow Deep. And I don't think that's too bad a colour. So in fact, I am going to take it over her skin in places too, because yellow and purple neutralise. They, they are complementary colours and therefore they will neutralise each other. And I think by doing that, we will pull the painting together. Now, I do want the background to be a decent yellow. I don't want it to be totally even. That's fine. I'm not looking for a, a perfect flat wash. But it's probably stronger than the yellow that I'll be putting into the painting. And then this is a more dilute version that's coming over the hat and into the hair. Don't want her to look too yellow. Maybe just give her a very gentle glow in places. And again, just being super careful with my soft edges. That's some burnt sienna. Just going to start adding in a little while that's damp. Again, some of that colour can go into the hair because we need to paint the hair very much as part of the face. We do not want what I call Lego hair, but it looks like it could just be clipped on and off. And one way of stopping Lego hair is to make sure that the colours of the face go into the hair. I know her hair is very dark, having some of these colours glinting through will be great. Some of that sienna over her iris and that neutralises down the purple and makes a beautiful rich brown. Very pink chin. So let's not 
take any yellow into that brush this is a size 10 brush if that's too big because it's actually this one hasn't got a particularly good point then of course let's just go on to a smaller brush because we are trying to make this quite controlled a lot of pink in this cheek as well edge would be way too hard let's smooth that off some orangey sienna in those lips as well as the the pink and the red feathering isn't doing any favors so we'll use our thirsty brush just to control where things are going maybe just a little bit while it's wet I don't mind some of that color coming out into the background which will just give the impression of some of those flyaway hairs now we have a choice but i think this is wet enough that it will be good to get a bit of pink into this skin now a bit of quin magenta but if you're depending how wet things are and you're struggling to control it you could absolutely dry it and then put some pink on separately in another layer and that might be a wise thing to do real pink at the edges i can see pink through her eyebrow even so let's we're not getting caught up in every detail of that you know every hair of an eyebrow or anything like that and that shadow well it's not a shadow little bag under her eyes tiny touches here and there under the nose it's pink certainly not that pink so just add some water and then thirsty brush just to control it again there's quite a lot of pink going on across the top we already said that there was quite a lot of pink around that chin we're blending away we're using loads of water and very little color to me it looks a little warmer over here so i've got a tiny bit of cadmium red just warm things up a smidge over here so we've got I think I'll mix a little of that cadmium red with a little of that quin magenta. That's coming. So top lip is a little cooler. Might need to introduce a smidge of purple. The bottom lip is definitely redder, warmer where it's hitting the light. And I'm hoping that orangey bit that we put underneath will glow through and keep that nice and warm. It all needs to dry now before we start putting darks on. So while it's drying, I could address this top. And I said I would do blue, so we've got our yellow, blue, and then we can go to come on to the red of that berry. I'm just going to do these sort of freehand. And I'm going to follow the stripes. And by following the stripes, hope it is going to imply direction. And I've gone up into the hair there, that's fine because I know the hair is going to be dark and it can cover. It's not an issue. These do not have to be perfect. They're just to imply that she's got a stripy shirt on. And I think it would give more movement and charm if they're not perfect. In fact, on some of them, I'm going to go back in while they're wet and put more pigment in 
I need to be careful the yellow has overlapped there. I don't want them to look too green. But honestly, if someone's checking the state of your stripes, then something has badly gone wrong with your portrait because they are very minor. Right, I hope those stripes will have let this dry. No, it's not quite dry. So I am going to just hair dryer this. Now, this should be the fun part that I've been dying to do for ages, which is the beret. So it's a really gorgeous, bright, bright red. So I think we're going to take some cadmium red and we must mix it up enough. You do not want to have to stop halfway through to try and match a colour. So make sure you mix up too much rather than too little. Um, and I'm going to add in lots of that Quin Magenta. You may need two layers, I don't know. We'll find out. Just get this a little more precise. Yeah, I think we're going to definitely need a bit more going on. I may get away with simply dropping it in wet on wet. We know that our watercolour is going to dry lighter. So if we need to do another layer, well, so be it. If you want to, you can totally bring some of that colour down into her hair because just as I say we haven't didn't want to get helmet hair even with a hat on you don't want to get helmet hair we've got that yellow under layer so if I run a damp brush across that should give us a little bit of shaping rather than looking like she's got a pancake on her head bless her while we've got that lovely bright red there, let's just see if she needs a little more on her lips. If you've used a colour in one place, it's lovely to use it in a couple. There's a red glow to the edge of her face in places, so let's get that in. Okay, we need to let that dry, and we will come on to do the dark. Nightmare. Turns out I hadn't pressed record when I put the dark layer on. Now the dark layer is actually the quickest layer, so I've decided to still share this film and I do apologise. The dark is just a mix of blue and brown and was put over the hair and very carefully around the eyes just and the eyebrows, just to bring out the sparkle and to give definition. And that's all that was put on here. So really, you hardly missed anything. It takes about two minutes. So there is our little girl. She's maybe a hat still a little damp, but I think we'll be OK. So I've just finished her off by deepening the red there. And I've put in a tiny touch of purple shadow to feel the, the hat coming over. Let's go really carefully round and make sure there aren't any pencil lines where there shouldn't be and then all that remains to do is remove the tape carefully if the tape starts to stick just warm it with your hair dry and that slightly melts the glue so that you don't rip your painting because if you rip your painting at this point you end up crying which is not good so there's our little girl and I think we've managed not to give her wrinkles which is good I hope we've kept the freshness of her face and just captured a little bit of that cheeky grin